Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me on their fight story. We have Helen Peralta here with us. Helen, how are you doing today? Um, I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for your patience um, with the technology. <laughs> how did you get involved with mixed martial arts? Um, I think it was kind of accidental. Somebody asked me in him that I had no idea who she was. Oh no. All right, guys. Um, as you can see, we've been having technical difficulties, but, um, just give us a few seconds, a minute while she reconnects with us. Sorry, the signal, I guess, is like really bad over here and it just keeps crashing. But um, she's been really very awesome, very patient with this whole process. Um, so just bear in, just bear with us just a few more minutes and we will get through this. Hello. Hi. Sorry. Not sure what I happened. I'm supposed to be good, but I have Verizon in my phone. Yeah, that's up. okay. <laughs> How did you get um, into MMA? Uh, it was mostly kind of like by accident. Somebody asked me if I saw the fight between Ronda Rousey and Holly Holmes, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I didn't. So he had to show it to me, and then he just couldn't believe that I didn't know who they were. But then watching that my first thought was I can I predict the case when she first uh, shot for no idea what it was or wrestling. She was getting frustrated. And then when she got kicked, I saw we can you know that she was up for it. It made me feel like, oh, this fight is something I can do. I like the meme mugging, I like the walkout, and I love punching people in the face. So it kind of was, you know, something that called me and then I started doing it and I just started winning. And I kept winning. So now I'm a professional. Did you do any sports before that? Uh, no, I was, I mean, I was good at playing like baseball, basketball when I was a kid. But since I, you know, for a while, I didn't practice any sport except for capoeira. It's a Brazilian mm -hmm. martial arts. It kind of resembles dance. So this, uh, mm -hmm. it requires a lot of, you know, like physical capabilities in order to be able to perform some of the moves. So I was in, in pretty good shape. I just, uh, I just didn't practice any, any of the cake and the punches and the, you know, the wrestling. And, mm -hmm. and I had no idea what MMA was. I really didn't know. Mm -hmm. I did capoeira once. Um, it was a trial and it didn't work out really well. I was sore for like a whole week. I couldn't move. And I realized that it was very intense. After that, I never, never did it because I was sore for like two weeks. Okay, well, again, we have technical difficulties, but, um, <laughs> You know, it happens. Nothing is perfect. Here we go. Hi. Hi. Hello. Yeah, no, I was just saying. I think the internet is against us today. It is, it is, it totally is. But I'm okay with it because I am determined to do this interview. Yeah, it's gonna show who the real champ is. Exactly, you got this, you got this. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I was just saying that I did Capoeira once um, and I was sore for like two weeks. Like, and the oh. thing is, it was just an entry <laughs> class and I didn't do much, but I was sore for like two weeks. I couldn't sit, I couldn't stand. 
couldn't even use the bathroom. It was just like, oh my God. And I was like, okay, I mean, I would love to do it, but I can't be out for like two weeks. Just And it was just a, like a 20, 30 minute class. And I was just like, wow, okay. <laughs> Did you ever compete in Capoeira? Yeah, it is physically demanding. Yeah, it is. Extreme. I compete against my teammates. Okay. Uh, we would train every day, and then after technique, we would swim around. But it was mostly fun. I mean, you always try not to hit the other person. Which, and, it, and when I that translates into martial art, it's just being aware of your space. Because mm. throwing a kick and make sure you don't hit the other person is a lot harder than throwing it and landing it. Mm. Have you used any of your capoeira skills in the in the ring or in the cage? I have, as an because I didn't care. I was fighting almost every month, and sometimes six a month because I would fight yeah. anybody. I, I didn't care. I didn't. I just wanted to see if I had what it takes to go pro. So I would do all kinds of crazy stuff. But then once I became a professional, then things get serious, and it became more about like, oh, you have to have a good record. And I don't even believe in that. I think record, you know, one of my coaches says that records are for DJs. I okay. just like to fight. And I think you, know, you should be able to just go out and, and put a performance for the entertainment business. Some people are so caught up with just like maintaining a record. I think boring. So I think a little, you know, more sweet. Yeah. I mean, I think a record is important, but it's, People should also look at who the person is fighting, because if you're fighting somebody who, who really has nothing um, skill levels with you and you're losing, then that's a different story. But if you're going up against the top people and you're holding your own throughout the whole time, then that should also reflect part of your record. It's important that regardless of where you are in your career, that you're making the right choices, you are picking the right people that are going to further your career. You need to understand that sometimes you're going to be presented with people that you have no control over, but always do your best regardless of where you are. Hello. <laughs> I'm back. Welcome back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. When you started your career, where did you think you were going to go with it? Which way? In what sense? Like MMA or bare knuckles or boxing? Well, you started with Capoeira. Then, you know, you, you were doing MMA, but then you also went to bare knuckle. So how was like the whole transitioning part of it? Like, did you think that this is what you were going to be doing? Or did you think you were just going to be um, taking, you know, MMA classes and staying there, like not really going on a professional level? I want I started in Capoeira, I did it just because I just moved to Iowa from New York and I did not know anybody. So it was a way of like having uh, some kind of connection socially and it was winter. I live in a very small town in Iowa, it's called Fairfield, Iowa, what is known for uh, meditating and the Maharishi University of Management. So there's nothing going on there. So, and I'm very shy. So if I was to meet people, I had to do some sort of activity at the gym. So I saw this guys been throwing crazy kicks in the, and they were playing music and they look so weird and i was like yep yeah, that's me i'm very weird and i'm throwing kicks and i don't know how to dance but i want to try so i went over there and started hanging out with them and i realized that even the game of capoeira itself is kind of a big metaphor for life you know the way that you play the game the, word, the, the level of awareness that it takes to be able to know your space and own it so I started doing that just for fun and as a, as a way of socializing because I'm very physical. I can't go out to a bar and, and stand there with a glass like, like an idiot. I just can't do that. Uh, but I can go to a class where I can move and be physical and, and experience life. I can do that. 
So that's why yeah. I was doing Capoeira. Then I started taking some cardio kickboxing classes because I am a professional chef. And I'm getting fat. And I didn't, like, didn't want to be fat anymore. So I was like, oh, okay, I need some, some sort of physical activity. And I was drinking alcohol and I was smoking cigarettes. I didn't even like the smell of cigarettes. So I was smoking it and regretting it at the same time. But I kind of got addicted to it. So I was looking for, for something that will help me get rid of those bad habits. So I went to a cardio boxing class. And man, two, three minutes in, I could not breathe. And I was like, I need to, I need to smoke a start only two cigars a day, then one month a day, then smoke every day except for the train. Then I started drinking only on the days I did the train, and eventually I was able to get rid of those bad habits. So I was like, all right, this is good for me. I want to take a fight. And, and that's pretty much how it started. I just wanted like something to help me deal with my personal life. And um, mm -hmm. mixed martial arts became it. Just training martial arts, having that good um, culture at the gym where everybody is just into something athletic, taking care of their bodies, and and that was just the perfect spot for me. Hello? No, I don't know what happened. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, good. I don't know what happened. I apologize for that again. Um, so you were explaining how you were in the class for like a few minutes <laughs> and, and you couldn't breathe. Oh, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, oh. it's, it's really breaking up. I'm not sure. Yeah, I can hear you, but it like breaks up sometimes in the middle of the sentence. Yeah, it's been happening over here too. I keep trying to get to as close as to the Wi-Fi as possible. Um, so how do you feel about your upcoming fight in Invicta? I've been fighting at 20 too many uh, high school, and I cried so many times for fights that didn't happen. But then I didn't take any time yeah. off because the fights didn't happen. So okay. eventually, I ended up putting on some muscle mass, and now I might be too big for 125, or maybe I'm for 150. Maybe I'm not too big, but I don't want to cut weight anymore. My body's just not feeling good. My last five or six fights. I just didn't feel good. I, I mean, I, I keep winning, so I kept losing weight. But I felt so weak on fight night. Girls that should have been out of there in seconds were able to make it all the way to the decision. And uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I want to try my luck at 125 pounds and see if that makes a difference. So even if my opponent's a little bigger, at least I will be able to be 100%. So if I'm 100%, I can fight a bigger person. So this fight is going to be a big test because I to know where I belong at weight class. Okay. So depending on how, the, how this fight goes will determine which weight class you will be staying at? Will you be sticking to the new weight class? I can't see you anymore. Oh. Um, after this uh, yeah, fight, I will so. you... I feel a lot stronger and I want I would just like to tell everybody that I love technology. Technology is my new best friend.
Let's see. Well, I want to apologize um, for the issues we've been having with the internet. I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, it's been dropping over here. It's been dropping over there. So what we are going to do is we are going to take a break and we are going to pick this interview up a little later. Um, we will definitely let you know, but I just want to say thank you very much. Uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel. That way you will be notified once um, the new interview will be taking place. Um, also, thank you to Helen for her patience. Um, she's been dealing with this, what is it now, 1.30 um, for like over 30 minutes. And, you know, it's not easy when you're a fighter and you're trying to prepare for a fight. You know, you need to be mentally, physically, and emotionally prepared on every level. And sometimes things like that, like this that we are experiencing doesn't really help. So I don't want to put too much pressure on that. I need her to focus and do what she needs to do. But as soon as we get this all straightened out, we will do another interview and we can update you with everything that is going on. So thank you so much for joining us during this short interview. Um, we really appreciate your support and your love and make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thank you. God bless you and have a wonderful day.